This is the lesson for chapter 4, section 5, titled Graphing Linear Equations in Standard Form. So standard form is when we have x and y on the same side. Now there is an actual form in which we deal, with, that we call standard form, where uh, some certain rules here at least, where the x term, the coefficient of the x term has to be a positive integer. The coefficient of the y term has to be an integer, so it could be minus a negative number. And the constant is an integer as well. But we're going to see some situations where they're not always in true standard form. So the main thing we're going to see, though, is where x and y are on the same side of the equal sign with these problems. And when it's that case, what we can do is we can use the intercept method. And that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to use x and y intercepts intercepts to graph to graph now it's just another way of graphing that allows us to come up with the solution fairly quick and so when we do this what we're going to notice about the x and y intercepts so if i just sketch a quick coordinate plane the y intercept is always has an x value of 0 so this ordered pair would be like 0 comma a a could be any number and then this ordered pair here for the x-intercept would be like an a comma zero. So again, that value of x is going to be some number, but y is always going to be zero. So we're going to see that concept here. So whenever we're trying to find the x-intercept, the x-intercept, we're always going to end up setting set y equal to zero because that x-intercept always has a zero value for y. And along with that, the y-intercept, we're going to always set x equal to 0 because no matter where that y-intercept is, anywhere along the y-axis, x is always 0. So we're going to use that concept to help us graph these problems. So let's start with the first one here. We're going to find out what the x-intercept is. Now I'm using this method when it's in the standard form, when x and y are on the same side of the equal sign. So again, these are x and y are on the same side, same side of that equal sign. This is when I'm going to use that method. And so I'm going to find the x-intercept first. I'm going to go ahead and set y equal to 0. So when I do that, this term is going to cancel out. And so 0 times 12 makes 0, so all I'm left with is 15x equals 60. And so from there, I can divide by 15. And I can come up with my value. So x is equal to 4 in this case. So what this point is, is 4 comma 0. It's where the line crosses the x-axis. And that's the point. And so taking a look at the next one, I'm going to find the y-intercept. And I'm going to do that by setting set x equal to 0. Because all y-intercepts always have an x value of 0. So it's going to take out this this 15x, and I'm just left with the negative 12y equals 60. So when I divide by negative 12, I end up getting my answer. y is negative 5. So this point is 0 comma negative 5. It's where the line crosses the y-axis, and it's way down here. So this method just gives us these two points, but we can draw a line fairly quickly through those points. And sometimes it's nice because the x-intercept is a value that sometimes we want to come up with this number. We want to find out what this x-intercept is. It means something when the x-axis means something more than just calling it the x-axis. When it represents like the number of apples or the time in which it takes to drive a car a certain distance, then it means something more. And so, oh, say, same thing with the y-intercept. The y-intercept in this problem, it's just where it crossed the y-axis. But if it were a real-world situation, it might represent the distance from home, or it might represent uh, how many uh, bananas we ended up buying, or something to that effect. And so what we'll end up wanting to do is find that value and then interpret it. And we'll see that later on in an example. So let's take a look at our next one. So same sort of thing on this one. We're going to go ahead and find out what the x-intercept is by setting x equal to 0. And so we go ahead and set, uh, not x equal to 0, but y equal to 0. So let's fix that real quick. So x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. We're going to take out the y term, so we're just left with 5x equals 20. Dividing by 5 is going to give us 
4, so x equals 4. So this point is 4, comma 0, same point as last time. So we'll just put the point right there. And then over here we have a y-intercept where we're going to set x equal to 0. So we're going to cancel out the x term because any y-intercept always has an x value of 0. So 4y equals 20, dividing by 4 gives us y equals 5. So 0, comma 5 is where this line crosses the y-axis. So here is the line. So let's take a look at this next problem. So when we solve this one, again, x and y are on the same side, so it's a great way to solve using this intercept method. So I'm going to find out what the x-intercept is. So the x-intercept, I'm going to set my y equal to 0, so it cancels out this term, so I'm left with that negative 1 half x equals 6. So when I multiply by negative 2, the reciprocal, I end up with an x value of negative 12. Now, I can't get over to negative 12. I don't have enough spaces, so maybe I'll go by 2's here. So I'll call this side negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12 would be just outside over here. And so over here I'll find out what the y-intercept is by setting x equal to 0. So I'll cancel out that fraction term and I'm just left with 2y equals 6. So y ends up equaling 3 when I divide by 2 on both sides. So this point would be 0 comma 3 where the other point was negative 12 comma 0. So when I go ahead and plot this, if I go up by 2's again, this would be 2, 4 here, 3 would be right in between. And so the line is not going to be as steep as the last couple lines. Try to hit that through that point there. So go something like this. So let's take a look at a real world example here. And here we end up having a situation that talks about bananas and apples. So that's probably where I got that uh, idea from when I was talking about how the x-axis could represent apples and the y bananas. And that's what we're going to end up seeing here because that's what they're talking about. So it says you have $6 to spend on apples and bananas. Graph the equation and then they give us the equation, 1.5x. Now let's see where they got that from. So x represents it says the number of pounds of apples. And let's go ahead and write that down along the x-axis. Number of pounds of apples. And then over here along the y-axis, this represents right here, it says y is the number of pounds of bananas. So number of pounds of bananas. And then what we're going to end up doing is taking a look at where they got these numbers. Where do they get the 1.5? Well, right here. See, it says apples are $1.50 per pound. So this is the rate. This is the rate of the apples. Rates are whenever we have a fraction, like a slope, is what we talked about before. It's dollars per pound. Two different types of units, dollars and pounds, but together as one number in a fraction form. So dollars per pound, $1.50 per pound times the number of pounds of apples is going to end up giving us the uh, amount of cost. And that's what the $6 represents. It's the amount of cost that we have. We have $6 to spend. Where the 0 0.6 came from right here, dollars or 60 cents per pound. So if we multiply 60 cents per pound by the number of pounds of bananas, that's going to give us the amount that we can spend on bananas. So that's where those values came from. Now what I'm going to do, because we want to solve for the two intercepts and then interpret what those intercepts represent. What I'm going to do to solve this is I'm going to change it to the fraction form. So there is a reason why fractions are kind of nice. And it's in, in a situation like this when I want to solve a problem, because a fraction is just two integers. It's, and, and dealing with integers is a little bit easier than dealing with decimals. And so 1.5 is the same thing as 1 and a half, which is the same thing as 3 halves. So 3 halves x is the same thing as 1.5. And same thing over here. 6 tenths is just writing it this way, 6 over 10, which is the same thing as writing 3 over 5 if I reduce that fraction. 
And here's why I like that, because when I go ahead and solve for the x-intercept, I set y equal to 0. I'm going to cancel out that 3 fifths x, and I'm left with 3 halves x equals 6. And for me, it is easier to go ahead and solve for x by multiplying by the reciprocal, because I, all I have are 2 small integers, 3 and 2 to deal with, and they'll cancel out. And if I do the same thing on the other side, multiply by 2 thirds, you'll see how there's a little bit of cross-canceling that goes on. So 3 goes into 6 uh, 2 times, and when I multiply across, I get x equals 4. So that's easier to do than trying to divide 1.5 into 6, at least for me. And so that is the x-intercept 4, comma 0. So let's go ahead and plot that. Now let's give these some, this some units here. So let's call, I guess we'll go at least in the x direction, maybe by 1s. And so this will be 2, 4, 6, 8. And so right here is the x-intercept. And we're going to define that in just a minute. Let's find that y-intercept now. So the y intercept. We're going to end up setting x equal to 0, so we'll take out the 3 halves x, and I'm left with 3 fifths y equals 6. And so when I go ahead and solve this, I'm going to multiply by that reciprocal again, 5 over 3, and those will cancel out. Do the same thing over here, 5 over 3. Again, think of that as 6 over 1. You do some reducing. 3 goes into 6 2 times. Multiplying across leaves me with y equals 10. So, I think I've got enough space to go up by 1. Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Just enough space. So, I'll write down some units here so people can read off easily what my values represent. And I'll put that y-intercept way up there at 10, because that's what it is. It's 0, comma 10. So, now let's try to interpret what's going on. First of all, I'll draw the line between them. And on this line, typically I drew arrows at the end, extending it past the those points that I have, but I'm not doing that here. And the reason is, is that if I went on the left side, if I went on this side of the y-axis, that would mean I have negative pounds of apples, and I can't do that. For And then the same reason why I don't go below the x-axis, because if I went below the x-axis, that would be negative pounds of bananas. And I can't have that. So it's these two points. So let's talk about what the y-intercept is. The y-intercept intercept represents the number of pounds of bananas I could buy if I did not, did not buy any apples. So I have zero apples because the value of x is zero. And x represents the number of pounds of apples. So this point is zero comma ten. So ten means I bought ten pounds of bananas and no apples, no pounds of apples for six dollars. And so Similarly, the same holds true for the x-intercept. So the x-intercept x -intercept represents the number of pounds of apples I can buy if I do not buy any, any bananas. So again, that point right there is 4, 0. It means I can buy 4 pounds of apples if I buy no pounds of bananas. And so that's what the x and y intercept represent. And sometimes we're going to want to find those to be able to graph just in between two points fairly quickly. So that's what you're going to see on tonight's homework. Good luck.